that? Is that Very a shark? Cool. Oh. oh. What is that? What is that? <laughs> oh, what the oh, heck? Oh, squid. Cool. What? Oh, wow. That is awesome. I'm so confused. As much as we love them, not every moment on a dive is a wow moment. Sometimes the ROVs spend hours slogging through the mud. Every highlight video you see is the result of months of careful planning and hours spent exploring. My name is Nicole Reno, the Chief Scientist of Ocean Exploration Trust. I want to take you through each element of the typical ROV dive, the hours we put into planning and preparation, descending to the seafloor, getting set up, and moving from waypoint to waypoint as we observe areas never before seen. We often start expeditions with just a general idea of the topographic features nearby and need to use the ship's sonar to make the detailed map needed to pick out priority areas and plan ROV dives. There's always more to explore than the time will allow, so setting a detailed plan keeps the whole team focused on the tasks at hand. As an example, here's the total dive profile for dive H1759, the first of its kind exploration of the Dragon's Back Seamount where we spent over 24 hours on the seafloor. A successful dive like this requires collaboration and coordination between the whole team. After launching the ROVs, the start of any dive is what we call blue water. This is when Hercules and Argus descend to the seafloor. During this time, the team reviews the dive plan so everyone in the control room and joining from shore knows the objectives. We also see the amazing biodiversity in the midwater across different depth zones in the ocean as the ROVs plummet to the seafloor. That tiny yellow dot represents the actual ROV descent rate into blue water. It drops about one meter every three seconds. It took us over two hours to reach the target depth of 3,210 meters. Once on the seafloor, it's time for the team to get set up for exploration. The navigators coordinate with scientists to get Nautilus, Hercules, and Argus into the best position. Once the video engineer calibrates the cameras, we're ready to start exploring. Every four hours, the entire team, also called watches, will trade out so everyone in the control room is working with sharp eyes and minds. On the seafloor, we catalog the deep sea's biology, geology, and chemistry with the science team monitoring our video and data feeds and recording observations in our data log. This is some of the most rewarding work, characterizing the seafloor through careful documentation. We are often the first to view these parts of the ocean and may produce the only records in this area for years or even decades to come. Every observation is highlight worthy, even if it doesn't make it to YouTube. Nice. All right, Steve. Okay, up slope towards two. Great. Uh, waypoint two is target bearing 3172 Argus. Dives often become a steady pace of observation, sampling, and reorientation as we fly between waypoints. But explorers always reserve the right to deviate from a plan when something unexpected comes into view. When video is not enough for scientists to evaluate an area, we collect samples to gain more precise biological or geological information. Before launch, we set up Hercules with samplers based on the dive plan and what we think we might find. Hercules can carry six Niskin bottles for water collections, eight jars for slurpable small samples, push cores to capture sediment and the tiny creatures that live in the mud, and two bio boxes divided into many compartments to store larger organisms and rocks collected with the arm. Samples are cataloged and archived at museums and accessible for scientists to study for decades to come. I think the whole team would happily spend days and days on the seafloor checking out this ecosystem, but all great dives eventually come to an end. Sometimes we leave the seafloor because we've completed all our dive goals and the next dive site is calling us. Or maybe the weather on the surface is getting rough. Or sometimes we ascend because we just don't have any more room on the ROV for samples. But at the end of a dive, we always leave the seafloor feeling like we've accomplished something wow-worthy. 
Every sample is valuable, and usually every meter covered had never been explored before. That is what makes every minute of the job worth it. The whole team's work all goes towards better understanding our ocean and planet, one small discovery at a time. We're always looking forward to our next expedition and can't wait for you to join us.